welcome to Pack Attack episode number 11 of Brutal Battle. And we're going to go even harder on the Pack Attack than we did with our last one. We did four beers in one sitting on the last one. We're doing five beers in one sitting on this they're one. 12 ounces, though. And yeah, they're, they're all 12 ounces. Very beans. low ABV. Right. And that's the reason that we feel like we can easily do something like that. But it's, um, yeah, they're all pretty low ABV and they're all very light for the most part. Uh, did you want to talk about the pack itself? Sure. It's Trogue Summer's pack. It's called Sunshine. Summer, Summer of Sunshine. Sunshine. Yeah, Summer of Sunshine. It's a 15 pack. Yeah, so you get three of each of these five beers. Yes. Which, you know, that's cool. Which also, by the way, disclaimer, cat. you may hear the cat playing in the background. Can't stop her. But yeah, 15 packs, interesting, especially for 12 ounce cans. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Um, I know yeah. we're excited about this. For me, this is like, when I saw this lineup, I thought, this is like, I got this for the beach, mm-hmm. but we're like, obviously, let's record. Yeah. Um, because they're all, they're 12 ounce, which I think is perfect for the beach, and everyone but the last one is really low in ABV. Yes. Um, so, perfect outside beach drinking beers. And we've only had one of these beers before. Yeah. So, four of them are going to be brand new for us, Excited. but I think two of them are like, Actually, three of them are derivations of beers we've had before, yeah. so we'll see. But they're new. So, anyway, do you want to start with the first one? you want me to start Go with ahead. the first one? Okay, I'll start with the first one. And then there there is, like, flavor text on them, so we'll read that after we try each one. So, this first one is called Summer's Here Lager, and it is 4.2% alcohol, so very low. I'm all about that. Sounds like a perfect summer beer. Well, summer's here is what it says. Summer's here, and it is here. Summer's here longer. Oh, you might have heard a little cat meow. Our cat just yelled. You may have heard. She has Um, a really weird meow, by the way. It's going to be hard to try to keep these. We don't go to the beach till September, so it's going to be hard to like not hard to not these. try and get into them. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh man, that's so clear so and so light. like light yellow, light yellow, very like straw. Yeah, that's probably one of the lightest light yellows I've seen on a beer in quite some time. But it looks beautiful, very clear. I mean, it smells like you would anticipate. Yeah, it's super clean. There's really not a ton going on in the nose. Yeah, it's honestly. pretty light. There's definitely a little honey, mm-hmm. little hay. Honey, hay, slight, slight lemon peel in the nose. Yeah, yeah it's got like this little citrusy-ish yeah. note. But it's very faint. It gives it a smells- slight tang at the end. Yeah, there's something nice. else. I don't know, it's very, it's very like honey sweetness smelling yeah. to me. Maybe, I mean, you said citrus, like, yeah, definitely some orange. Okay, smells good. Smells easy. Oh, and the first glass we have to drink out of is a Trogue glass. That's right. I wasn't even thinking about that, but yeah. This is a glass I picked out, and then Carlin's like, I need one too. It's got a decent, like, spent malt grain flavor mm. on the end. It's so good. Which I saw, I do typically like that on, like, lighter type beers. This is, like, I think the perfect... Very easy. Beach beer. It's very easy. Again, this is one of those types of beers where you can pay attention to the flavor if you want or just totally ignore it because it is kind of low level on the flavor, but what's there is good. It's very, very like honey driven in my opinion. Yeah. This is a good backyard barbecue beer. Mm -hmm. I feel like this whole pack is going to be like a good outdoor, good like take to a party and someone's going to find something they like here. Yeah. It's got the hay in there. It's like honey, hay, and there's that little bit of, like, the lemon peel that I was yes. talking about that I was getting for it. It's good. Yeah, it's it's just enough flavor to make you satisfied. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read the flavor text. Uh, bring on those summer vibes with this petite yet flavorful lager. Starting with Pilsner malt and flaked rice, we employ Krausening to lend a crisp finish and subtle fruity esters. Dry hopping with citra and saz unveils notes of bright citrus, lemon rind, I said that, and flowering herbs. I don't know about the herbs there. Hmm. Our refreshing pale white gold brew cheerfully declares summer is here. So yeah, they use their house lager yeast for this one. You know, herbs is pretty broad. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I don't know what that means. I I like it though. I'm going to take a drink of water to cleanse. 
Because some of these are going to be similar. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. And that's why you want to cleanse your palate on this one, because, yeah. Like, the next one will be kind of similar to the first one. And Our this next, is the one we've had before. So it's tried and true. Yes. There's Sunshine Pilsner, yeah. which they have been doing, like... For a long time. For Yeah, I, I would be interested to see, like... Oh, it says, like, if it's a year-round beer. Oh, yeah. I, the, well, this one's not, because they've never done it. Like, I'm pretty it sure it's the first but, um, time. On my um, Sunshine Pills, it says it's year-round. Yeah, so they're probably marked year-round if they are, and they're not if they're not. Um, anyway, Sunshine Pilsner, obviously it's a Pilsner, and it's 4.5%. Okay. Let's crack the sucker open. I remember loving this, and we had it. Not that long ago. Yeah, it's 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 a good one. And, um, I mean, obviously it's pretty popular because it's been around. Been around for some time, really. All right. Let's take a look. Oh, this one's even more clear. Yeah. Gosh. The other one was like super clear. Oh, there's like a little bit of chill haze on the first one. Yeah, this one's like clear, clear, clear. It is like also can... very pale yellow, but it's not as pale yellow. Yeah. It's like there's the slightest tinge of an orangey hue that shows up in it. It's really beautiful looking. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I love looking at beers like this. It's just like, that's what beer should look like. This just this smells so crisp. It's so much richer in the nose. Yeah, it's like has this like beer. snap to it. Yeah, doesn't it, it really does. Yeah, the, and the citrusy notes are more serious on this one. This is leaning more orange. Mm -hmm. The summer here was very like lemon, like it said, lemon rind. But this is more leaning like orange, and the the uh, bitterness smells less actually yeah. than the summers here. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's more honey as it's well just, in it's there. It's just so vibrant. You get that nice pilsnery yeast I mean, smell. Summers here lager smell good, but Ooh. this one smells like like I really want to drink it. <laughs> yeah, it smells, it smells pretty awesome. You're still getting some of that honey and hay. Yeah, I mean, very similar notes to the summers here. Yeah, but like we said, snap. not lemon, more orange, and it's just like they're richer, darker, or richer, more, deeper aromas. Has more pep in its step. Yeah, sure. It's got a definitely a more serious um, mouthfeel than the summers here. Yeah. Ooh, there, there's actually more serious bitterness. On I was just finish. gonna say that there's definitely more bitterness. Mm. This is so good. Wow. It's gonna be so hard to rate these. I know it already. I know it's gonna be tough. But this is really good. Like the honey is showing up a lot in the finish of this one. Spent malt grain like we were getting from the summers here, but not as pronounced because that honey's kind of taking it down. Yeah, but it's not too sweet. It's, mm -mm. it's, it's, it's to me. This is no. Uh, a well balanced, like you get a little sweetness, you get the flavor, and then you get a little bitterness to kind of round out. Yeah, the bitterness really does a nice job of rounding out the sweetness because you feel like if it maintains where it is for a certain amount of time, it's going to become too sweet. But then that's when the bitterness kind of jumps in and takes care of that. Oh man, I want to keep drinking that, but I want to leave some in case I need to come back to it. That one's real good. Yeah, uh, I'm a fan. Very tasty. Okay, obviously um, we've had it before, so you know. so far I'm liking that one better than. Some Flavor, oh, flavor, flavor text. text on it. Let's read. Okay. It takes the right ingredients and people. Oh, before you do it, biscuity. It's biscuity. Oh, I can see that. Yes. Sure. Okay. It takes the right ingredients, people, and processes to nail the complex balance of two row barley, zesty saz hops, and yogurt yeast. Yeast. Secondary fermentation creates natural carbonation that delivers soft notes of fresh cut straw, flowering herbs. <laughs> In okay. the end, this bright and refreshing, clean American craft pilsner is our go-to when the sun is shining and makes us happy when the skies are gray. It's really good. I'm going to, and when we're done going through these, I'm going to have to go back through them again for the ranking, but you want, oh, you probably want me to do the next one. Sure. Okay. So the next one is, I think it's probably a little bit of derivation of the Sunshine Pills, Sunshine Salt and Lime Lager. Now, I'm usually not big on these types of beers with, like, like salt and lime added, but we'll we'll see about it. It's 4.3%, so I don't know. We'll yeah. See. I think it could be good. Oh, I just had some beer, like, fly <laughs> onto one of the glasses on the side of it. Okay, there you go. Yeah. 
So to me, this is looking very similar to the Summer's Here Lager. If you hold up. Yeah. It's, like it's very pale. It's a little bit darker. Nah, I think it actually looks almost exactly the same as the Sunshine Pills. Oh, yeah. Very similar. Sunshine Pills does look a bit clearer, though. Very. Which would make sense because when you're putting salt into a beer, it makes it cloudy. So, it's like, at really least slightly. Clear yellow. Yeah. Ooh. Well, it smells like salt and lime. So let's... Wow. It sure <laughs> delivers on that. It smells very, like, crisp and refreshing. Obviously, yeah. it's super tangy on the nose, like, sour because of that lime to it. I don't really smell anything else. No, I don't either. And this is the problem is, like, it can end up reminding me of, like, a cleaning, cleaning product. I know. So that's why I typically don't like beers like this, but I don't know. Let's go in. I don't think it reminds I. You're right. I have had that experience with beers before. Like, you smell and you're like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think this one goes that far, though. Okay. Um, I tried it, and honestly, the level of the lime is not as aggressive as I yeah. thought it would be based off but, the nose. Yeah. Well, this is good. It's soft. Well, that's the salt yeah. in there, like, making it super nice and, like, soft. I like that. Um, this is good. But it also, like, it. like, it's not tasting like it has too much of a salinity to it. No, it's very well balanced. Extremely. I, I always say things are well balanced, but they are. Well, for what this is, like, extremely well-balanced, because like I was saying, like, there are a lot of those beers like this out there that taste like cleaning product, and they go really hard on the salt, or they go really hard on the lime, or hard on both of them. This, they were very restrained in how much they were putting in, so it just kind of, like, folds in to the other natural flavors in there. Like, you're getting the straw to it. You're getting the honey to it. Yeah. It's well, nice. that's very nice. Uh, again, these are being really hard to rank. I wasn't expecting to like this that much. And it's it's pretty good. Like Yeah, it's just it's just mm-hmm. wild how it's like just like a I don't I don't want to say it's a hint of It's a little more than the a lime. hint. It, yeah, it's a Yeah, it's a little more than a hint, but it's very very restrained. It still tastes like very much like that lager. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, they flavor definitely, profile with yeah. like it's the, definitely a lager with salt and lime. Like I was wondering, I was wondering like, is this going to be remind me of a goza? T- you know, but it doesn't. Yeah, no, they definitely wanted it to like be a lager first, and that it still definitely tastes that way, which is great. So again, that's good. That's perfect. Good. That's beach, very good. Perfect beach beer. I'm a fan. You gonna do the next one? Yeah. Oh wait, a flavor, flavor text. text. Gotta read this one. These flavor texts are kind of not that exciting, but. Cool ocean breeze, sun-kissed sand, and sunshine, salt, and lime lager. Sounds like a summer we can get behind. Our bright and crisp lager delivers a zesty note of lime and touch of salt that will transport you to the shore. Whether it's hot days or long nights, this is the beach beer you want in hand. Yes. I guess in this one they didn't have as much, like, actual interesting flavor text they could have put there, but, you know. Anyway. Okay. So... Next one. So this is the one that kind of caught my eye mm-hmm. and was the reason I wanted to buy this pack. It's called Leisure Cruise. It is a raspberry wheat, and it's 4.7%. So the reason this one is very interesting to me is it makes me think of their Dreamweaver. Uh. And their Dreamweaver is their Hefeweizen. And their Dreamweaver is actually, the, like, the first... Like craft beer that Rebecca fell in love yes. with, and every time we have Trogues, I'm like, I need to get my hands on more Dreamweaver because it is good. We had we had Dreamweaver not too long ago. And it was very good. I was like, it's so good. It's just like has, it's so nostalgic for me. There's a lot of head to this. Yeah, I'll say it's like a lot, a lot of head. What was ABV on this one? Four point seven. Four seven. Okay, so this is on the higher end. <laughs> For the fours is what I mean. On the higher end for the four percenters. In this pack. In this pack. In this pack is what I mean. You definitely see a little like reddish yeah. tinge to the beer. Like kind of Almost cloudy. pink. Yeah, kind of cloudy. You can see through it a little bit. But it's a little cloudy. Yeah, a little like, a little pink. Yeah, it's pinkish. Mm, it smells like raspberry. Whoa. It smells like, like gorgeous raspberry. Mm, is it raspberry gay. or raspberries? It says raspberry. Okay, so it's probably flavor, not the actual fruit. Additions, raspberries. Okay. 
So usually when they're when they're saying what's in it, they'll say raspberries if it's actual berries and raspberry if it's flavoring. But I don't know. Maybe there's mm-hmm. also flavoring. I don't know. We'll find out. It smells floral. Though, it's a, too. on the. I just did a little sneak peek of the can, and it said they added real raspberries. Okay. I mean, it smells very strongly of raspberry, but it's very floral as well. I can see that. It's like strong berry aroma followed by like a perfumey floral note. But it also smells light. Yeah. Like I, I smell like the wheat backbone of the beer. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely get the wheat in there. Okay, I'm going in. It's nice. I mean, it smells good. It smells very robust with the fruit. Mmm. Also very good. Ooh. It's very nice. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's like just enough flavor, but not too much. Mm. But sometimes, like, you add fruit in a certain styles of beer, yeah, and then like it the... doesn't remind you of a beer. Yeah, yeah. This still reminds me of a beer. Yeah, that's really good. It's very light and refreshing. It's really smooth, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought from the raspberry, you'd end up getting a bit of, like, a tang to it. And you do, but it's, like, such low level. Yeah. And it, like, so you get that up front, and then it kind of folds into the actual maltiness of the beer and that wheat flavor to mm-hmm. it. Um, it's very nice. Almost too low on flavor for me. The, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. They could have gone a little bit harder on the raspberry, but I like where it is. Yeah, it's not, I still really, really like this. There is that floral note in there as well. Yeah. It's, but the good it's thing is, good. it's not as pronounced in the flavor as it was in the aroma because yeah. it's pretty pronounced in the aroma and I was getting a little mm. turned off by that but flavor it's fine yeah. it's all good I don't need, I don't even know how I'm going to rank these beers well what you'll do probably is what I'm going to do is do a quick taste of all of them and then just start figuring that one out so um like when you're when we do like our normal like two beers it's really easy to be like I like one more than the other but yeah. when you have so far five, four, yeah. we haven't t- tasted the last one. We have four beers that like are really good. Yeah, I mean they're from a brewery that you respect and you know has a great track record. Yeah. Uh, do you want to read the flavor text on that one? And sure. Then it's time to kick back, stroll into the shade, float on that happy place, float on, float on to that happy place, and enjoy a leisure cruise. Our raspberry wheat ale is classic, lighter. Bodied beer with big flavor. Adding real raspberries after fermentation keeps those bright pops of fruit up front while you bask in those little escapes. It's quite good. All right, I'm going to do and the- it's, um, I haven't been reading what malt or anything is right. in any of these, but it does have the, the color on here. Mm-hmm. Um, and the color they call this was sunset gold, which okay. I think I, I could get behind. So the last one right now I'm very excited about because this is a really hoppy one. I mean, we've been having a lot of light beers, and now they just, like, throw in this random hoppy one. This is their Perpetual Haze. It's a hazy IPA Imperial Pale Ale. Imperial Pale Ale, they say. Oh, interesting. Um, It's 7.5% alcohol, and um, I think based off the fact that it's called Perpetual Haze, it's probably, like, a hazy take on their Perpetual IPA. Which we quite like. Yeah. That's a good That's what, when one. I saw this, I was like, oh, we've had this. We like it. And Carlin's like, no, no we, we have, have not. not had this one. I'm like, oh. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not good at checking in on tap. No, you're not. You're actually downright terrible at it. <laughs> you, you, I, mean, I go you, through phases. You literally quit. <laughs> I quit again. I, I, I was good, then I quit, then I got back on the horse, and now I quit again. All right, well. So I rely on Carlin to tell me if we've had things and if we liked it. Right, yeah. Okay. Man, it looks like a hazy IPA. It's pretty orange, too. Yeah. I mean, 7.5%, that makes sense color-wise. So this is like the big hitter of the group. <laughs> 7.5%. Watch out. You might be on the floor oh, after this one. No. Oh, man. It smells so good. It's a good nose. It's dank. It yeah, smells really dank. It really does. That's so dank. That's that's just like pure like lupulin syrup yeah, is what it smells like. I wasn't like. expecting that. That's it a smells, great nose. It smells west coasty. Yeah, it smells like a 
nice, like, thick, syrupy, West Coast-style IPA with a nice hit of bitterness, which you typically don't get from Hazy's. And it's, um, it's like that candied orange. Oh, yeah. Very candied orange. Oh, I love that smell. It's so good. There's a sweet... It's like There's some sweet. grapefruit in there as well. Like, just that... It's like juicy citrus sweetness. I did some pineapple in there. But it's not like tangy pineapple. It's just like the really sweet, like golden pineapple mm. in there. That's low level though. A little tasty. bit of bubble gum too. Slight bubble I guess, gum. Yeah, it's, there's a lot going on. I went in for the flavor. There's a lot. Taste. It smells great. It tastes great too. Mm. Oh yeah. Ooh, it's very candied on That's the flavor. Good. It smells a lot. The it tastes a lot like it smells. It's almost too sweet. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It definitely tastes like hop candy. But if I, anyone's ever had like hop hard candies, so it's like there is like extra sugar in there. Is what it I, seems. I like it. I don't not like it. And it all to be honest, like it also may be seeming more sweet too in comparison to the beers we've been having. Sure, uh, sure. It's because it's you know higher ABV. It's going to be sweeter. Mm. It is pretty good. I do like it. I'm definitely getting that bit of bubble gum. I said I was getting on the nose. I'm getting a lot of that kind of like candied um, orange. Yeah, it's good. Hmm. Getting a little bit of um, slight pininess in there. A little it's bit good. of pine. I just don't know how I'm going to rank these. Do you just want to do the flavor test yeah, on Yeah, I it? just picked it up. Um, and tell what the hops are in this one, too. Bravo, Chinook, Cashmere, Citra, and Simcoe. That was a lot. Okay. This beer combines the clean, crisp bitterness of a West Coast IPA and the softness of a hazy. Pale malts lay down an underlying complexity. Raw wheat, London 3 yeast, and vigorous dry hopping stirs up a haze that cradles the citrusy hop combination. Front and center are Citra and Cashmere, unlocking juicy notes of orange, passion fruit, and nectarine. Hmm. This is tough. Yeah, no, I'm I'm going back right now and retasting. Mm. Mm. I mean, ugh, I don't know. This is hard. This is very hard to do. Okay, I think I'm getting there. Okay. Um. Do you need to put them in a particular order? Mm hmm. You, you can go. Do you want ahead. me to go first? Yeah, and I'm trying to figure mine out. Um. Okay. Really? That's interesting. What's so interesting about that? Mm hmm, 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 hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You want to you want to go over yours? Mm-hmm. You're, I see you're drinking more. Are you trying to make well, sure? I'm like now you have me like doubting my ranking. No, no, no. I mean, go for it. Go for it. I'm, I'm, There's not I'm, a bad beer in here. Yeah. Right. I, I agree. I agree. I um. They're all very close for me. Um, my number five is the Sunshine Salt and Lime Lager. I really like the way it tastes. The nose is a little off-putting, so that's why I put it at number five. Okay. Number four, I put the Summer's Here Lager. Very tasty, just a little bit lower in flavor than I was looking for. Perpetual Haze, Hazy IPA, I put number three, so middle of the road. Number two is the Leisure Cruise of Raspberry Wheat, and my number one is Sunshine Pilsner. Okay, so mine's different. I am going. Oh, so we have the same number one. Yeah. So my number five is the Summer Here Lager. Still quite good. My number four is the Sunshine Salt and Lime Lager. Uh, kind of impressed with how they yeah, did that. It's, it's very good. My number three is the uh, Leisure Cruise Raspberry Wheat. My number two is the Perpetual Haze. And my number one is the Sunshine Pills. That Sunshine Pills is so good. Awesome. Ours isn't that different. No, I mean I sw- I switched, you know, the summers here and the the su- sunshine salt and lime, and then I switched the perpetual haze and leisure cruise. So yeah, 
So the yeah. sunshine pill is number one for both of us. Yeah, it's really. I mean, yeah, you see it's why it's excellent. been around for so long, and why it's a year-round beer because truly the summer of sunshine, right? Yeah. All right, that was a lot of fun. It was um, so much fun. Mm, those I can't wait to. It's gonna be hard not to drink these until well, we go to the beach. I mean, it, it might still be in stock, so. Yeah, but I don't know if we need a whole other one. Do you know any people who want some? <laughs> you could split. I just want, like, I know, I just want, like, half of another pack. Right, you could split with someone. But anyway, this was really good. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll do some more pack attacks in the, in the future. Not too distant, but, yeah, it's awesome. It's always fun. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Really do appreciate it. Um, help us out a little bit with our traction. Just let people know about the podcast. Because also... If people are interested, we're on YouTube now, too. Uh, I figured this thing out where we can just have the RSS feed get hooked up to YouTube, and they just make a video out of it so people can listen to it through YouTube. I mean, you can watch it technically, but what you're seeing is just our logo for the whole duration. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nothing but anyway, exciting. there there are people who watch it who do the podcast just through YouTube, so it works. I mean, whatever. But anyway... Thanks, everyone, for listening. Until next time. Keep it brutal.